welcome uh, to Grace Bible College as we start the study of the book of Revelation uh, using uh, uh, Dr. Oliver B. Green's book on uh, Revelation uh, and the notes. Uh, and I believe you can get them uh, online uh, with a PDF or you can go probably to the local bookstore and find it. Uh, and we use a lot of Dr. Oliver B. Green's books. so. You bear with us, and uh, the criteria for the class is to to read uh, through the uh, the book of Revelation by Dr. Green, and then uh, to uh, uh, certainly the Bible is the most important book, and we're going to use it. Uh, uh, the uh, King James Bible is the only Bible we use, and uh, and you don't have to worry about that. Amen. But uh, we'll be uh, doing a basic introduction tonight, and welcome you to this class. And uh, I hope uh, you'll get a blessing out of it, and I hope you'll tell others. And uh, if you're viewing this overseas, I, I pray that you get many to come out and sit down and watch it. We'd love to have them uh, to, to bring you in by way of uh, uh, whether it's uh, World Wide Web or uh, through DVD or however. We're glad to have you. So let's start with prayer. Father, we uh, bow before you tonight and ask your will and help tonight as we uh, we start out on a trail to study the Word of God in the book of Revelation of uh, Jesus Christ. And I pray for your will to be done. Open our understanding, our eyes, our ears, our heart, our lips, our mouth, everything, Lord, to your glory and honor. For we pray and ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Now, uh, I'm going to read just a um, verse or two here, and I'm going to give you a basic introduction uh, tonight, so uh, chapter 1, verse 1, the, uh, the revelation of Jesus Christ, uh, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants these things which must shortly come to pass, and he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John, who bare record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of, the, of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. Now, John to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you, and peace from him which is, and which was, and which is to come, and from the seven spirits which are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Now, I'm going to stop there tonight, but you you go ahead. I need you to read through this book of Revelation, each chapter at least three times. Now, uh, John, the beloved, John, John the Revelator here, wrote uh, under the direction of God the Holy Spirit. Now, let me just say this right up front. This is the inerrant, infallible Word of God. And again, you'll probably see that somewhere down the road. And uh, But uh, the Lord never made, man has made um, mistakes in printing. Man has made mistakes uh, in uh, trying to rewrite the Word of God. And, and we're, not, we're not doing that. Uh, we're going to use the Word of God, thus saith the Lord, because that Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we can trust that Word. Uh, and you can trust the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, and you can trust the word that he's left us. Now, the background uh, to, the, uh, to the book of uh, uh, Revelation, um, uh, these are your introductory notes. Uh, the Apostle John took over the pastoral work in, in Ephesus about 70 A.D., uh, including uh, the churches in the surrounding area, the seven churches of Asia Minor, and you're going to need to know them and what each one stood for, and we'll go through that verse by verse. That's in chapter 2 and 3. The Roman uh, emperor, Nero, what's Nero rem uh, remembered for? Class, uh, he's the one that fiddled while Rome burned, amen. Uh, so he blamed it on us Christians for setting it on fire, but when they came down to the honesty of it, Nero set Rome on fire. He had, he was a little, uh, I think, a little scrambled upstairs. His elevator didn't run all the way upstairs. We got a lot of them today. The Roman emperor Nero had uh, persecuted Christians in Rome. 
But the fiery trial that Peter had promised had not uh, yet begun. But when uh, uh, these things started and the emperor uh, Demetrian uh, became emperor in 81 to 96 AD, uh, the persecution was intensified. And uh, he was a cold-blooded murderer, uh, as you well know if you know anything about uh, these emperors. It's a good study on the emperors, but uh, he promised, uh, uh, of course he started, and and Nero did too, in this thing called emperor worship. And we we have a lot today that still do that, amen. Amen. Uh, And uh, and, and so uh, there's only one you ought to worship. And his name is Jesus. Amen. 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 But uh, they, he promoted emperor worship and uh, and began uh, his announcements. Uh, our Lord and uh, and God uh, uh, brought these, allowed these men to come to power. Uh, didn't mean that they were doing right. And uh, our Lord wanted us to have a choice, and we do have a choice even today. We're living in, in this hour. It's called the hour of grace. Amen. Uh, but uh, the Lord, and, and there's men that God has raised up as as our presidents in the past, and after they're elected, I think we as Christians have responsibilities uh, to uh, to follow their their direction as long as it doesn't come in conflict with the Word of God. When the Word of God uh, is uh, challenged. Uh, uh, we don't follow that. We follow the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, uh, Rome had a penal camp there uh, where the prisoners labored uh, in the mines. It was here uh, in this uh, isolated spot away from his beloved Christian friends that John received the visions that made up the book of Revelation. No S on the end of it. A lot of people misquote uh, that, but it's a revelation of Jesus Christ. You don't know the, the truth of it. John wrote it, uh, and uh, remember there's always dates and stuff in, in class, but this was, uh, John penned this down around uh, 95 A.D. What does A.D. stand for? Well, good thing you ain't on truth or consequences. Amen. After death, after dissension, or uh, and we, it's so easy to remember it that way, A.D. Uh, but uh, uh, as we look at everything, has got, we all have a character, don't we? Uh, Revelation is a unique book with characteristics uh, that must be noted. Well, uh, it's, it, it's, we look at a lot of prophetic things in the book of Revelation. It's a book of prophecy, one, uh, verse 1. 3 of chapter 1, 10, verse 11, 19, 10, 22, 7, uh, and 10, and 18 and 19. Prophetic, uh, in chapter 1, he is the risen priest king. In chapter 2 and 3, he examines the churches. In 4 and 5 of the book of Revelation, uh, he receives the title deed to creation. In uh, 6 through 19, he judges the world and returns in glory, and 20 through 22, he reigns in glory and power. Uh, we have never saw him with our natural eye, but we're going to. Amen. And we're going to rule and reign with him uh, uh, in, uh, on this. Uh, he, he's going to sit up, he's going to uh, sit down on David's throne there and rule and reign. He's going to come back. Uh, and we, as those that make up the bride of Christ, uh, where we're Jew or Gentile, uh, are going to rule and reign with him, amen. Uh, I've asked him to give me Newton and Conover and Claremont and, and uh, several maiden, especially maiden, amen. Amen. And, uh, uh, but it is a book of prophecy, and, it, and it's a book that's Christ-centered. It is the revelation of Jesus Christ, not... No, not simply a, of a prophetic program. In chapter 1, as I said a while ago, he is the risen priest king. Uh, and, uh, of course, uh, this book is, a, is an open book. The word revelation is literally unveiling. Might ask for a definition on a test sometime. Uh, what does, uh, uh, what would, what, if it be one word that you could describe the, the book of Revelation as a definition, definition, 
what would you call it? It'd be unveiling. Daniel was told to seal this book up in Daniel 12, 4. By the way, the book of Daniel is a commentary to the book of Revelation, as the book of Revelation is a commentary to the book of Daniel. Uh, Old Testament, Old uh, uh, was the Old Covenant. New Testament, New Covenant. Amen. And uh, and Daniel was told to seal it up. John uh, was told to, uh, to seal it not. Instead of uh, being a collection of puzzling prophecies, Revelation is a reasonable, orderly unveiling of Christ and his final victory over Satan, sin, and the world system. Amen. So to say the best is yet to come, class, uh, the best is yet to come. Now not only was it an open book, it was a symbolic book. He sent and signified it in chapter 1, verse 1, suggests that the book uses signs and symbols to convey its message. Uh, Rome was, uh, uh, Romans, Roma, uh, and some of this uh, uh, is confusing in a way, but if you'll let the Holy Spirit teach you, uh, we'll, we'll see and it'll convey the message uh, how important this book is. And uh, it'll uh, explain itself if you'll read it and, and not try to add to or take away from. Just let it, let it be what it is, symbolic, uh, uh, and there it'll explain itself. Uh, the Lord don't have to explain anything, but He does. He don't want you in the dark. He wants you in the light. He's the light. He's the way, he's the truth, and he's the life. And so uh, the, the, the light wants us to, to certainly uh, be in that light. Uh, I mean, for example, our flag uh, speaks of the existence of, uh, of, uh, of America. But yet America is not in anywhere named in prophecy. And uh, the picture of Christ uh, is... Uh, is like that in, in verses uh, 12 through 16 of chapter 1. Uh, it's a picture of Christ. It's not literal, but each of these symbols conveys a spiritual truth that we can learn from. Amen. Now, based on the Old Testament, the Old Covenant, it is impossible to study this book without referring constantly to the Old Testament scriptures. But of the uh, 404 verses in Revelation, 278 contain references to the Old Testament. It is calculated that there are over 500 references or allusions uh, to the Old Testament in Revelation with Psalms, Daniel, Zechariah, Genesis, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and Joel being referred to the most often. It's not only a, a, a symbolic book based on the Old Testament, but it's numerical. Numerical. No book in the Bible contains so many symbolic numbers. There is a study series of sevens in this book. Seven churches, seven seals, seven trumpets, seven vials, seven light lamp stands. The number three and a half also shows up repeatedly. And uh, you also find the number 144,000 sealed Israelites. We hear about the 12 stars and a lot of 12s in this book, the 12 gates, the 12 foundations. Not only is it an open book, symbolic book, Christ-centered book based on the Old Testament and numeric, but it's also universal. Revelation covers the world. John sees nations, peoples, uh, and uh, also masses of hum humanity. This book outlines God's judgment of the world and its creation of a new world for His people. So to say the best is yet to come is not uh, anything to be uh, laughed at because the best is literally to come. Amen. And it's also a majestic, not only universal, numeric, uh, based on the Old Testament, symbolic, open, but it's majestic. This is a book... Uh, of the throne. From chapter 4 to the very end, we read about the king and his rule. The, world, uh, the word throne, by the way, is used 44 times, king, king, and kingdom, and or rule about 37 times. 
power and authority over 40 times. Uh, we see Christ as the sovereign of the universe ruling from the heavenly throne. Now, not only that, but uh, not only it being uh, Christ-centered and open and symbolic based on the Old, uh, old Covenant, uh, numeric, universal, majestic, but it's also uh, sympathetic. Amen. Throughout the book, we see the sufferings of God's people and of the nation of Israel and what all they're going through because of their rejecting Christ as the Messiah. Uh, and we're, uh, we're coming up on uh, worshiping uh, uh, the birth of Christ again before long. And But to, to remember, the Lord said he didn't will that any should perish but that all should come to repentance. So uh, uh, who wants to destroy? The devil does. Who wants to keep those in darkness and, uh, oh, you can't have a good time and be saved? I've had the best time since I've been saved, and I'm looking for a better time that's, uh, to come. Amen. And I believe we'll have that. But throughout this book, uh, you'll see the sufferings of God's people. Uh, we find Antipas is martyred in, in uh, chapter 2, verse 13. Samaria will face imprisonment. Souls under the altar cry for God's avenging judgment. The hour of trial is coming, yet God will judge the world and save his people. It's climatic. Revelation is the climax of the Bible. Uh, there's not any more open scripture, open our book, we have a 66 book, for Old Covenant, New Covenant. It's all coming to a climax and to be fulfilled. Amen. And the Revelation uh, is the climax of the Bible and shows the fulfillment of the plan and the purpose of God for this universe. And uh, we need to understand God had a plan. Amen. And, uh, and, and we have to look at the interpretation while good men differ on the details of the, of the book, when it comes to the uh, broad interpretation, there are four different approaches. And I'm going to give you those four by way of introduction tonight. The first is, uh, is, is what I'm going to give you is a, 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 a pretest uh, from the Latin word preter, P-R-E-T-E-R meaning past. Hard to have a future if you don't have a past. Amen. The only, the only one man that doesn't have a, he doesn't have a past and everything is future and that's the Lord. Amen. Uh, and, I mean, uh, he, uh, and of course, Adam had a, didn't have a past. God cre created Adam, breathed into Adam the breath of life and uh, Adam uh now Adam ha has uh, somewhat of a past, had a rib taken from him, made woman, and, uh, and thank God he did, amen, to complete, uh, to walk along in, in uh, prayer partners. And, uh, but uh, anyway, remember, remember that, that we have a past. I, I remember where God found me at. I, I remember what he did for me. I remember the, uh, saving me. And it's not only that, but it's, uh, it's historical. Interpretation uh, is this uh, camp. Uh, they claim to see the fulfillment of church history in the symbols of the book of Revelation. The believer, the believer that uh, they believe that the book outlines the course of history from uh, apostolic times to the end of the age. They search history and history books to find events that parallel those in Revelation. And, some, and by the way, the Bible uh, will be fulfilled. Uh, whether man believes it or not, every bit of it will be fulfilled. There won't be one, not one, uh, one, one I go undotted and one T go uncrossed. Amen. It will be fulfilled. It's historic and uh, and. One, one uh, interpreter, uh, which was Luther and the Reformation in a uh, symbol that uh, to, to another student pictures the intervention 
according to the intervention of the printing press, Gutenberg, first thing was ever printed on was the Word of God. Amen. And uh, of course, we have not only uh, those two, but we have spiritual. These students uh, uh, abandon the idea of prophecy completely and use revelation as symbolic presentation of the conflict between Christ and Satan, good and evil. They reject the idea uh, that John writes with uh, actual events. They, uh, they don't believe it's actual events. They claim he's dealing only with basic spiritual principles. But John tells us uh, he is writing a prophecy. And uh, we understand while he, we recognize that Revelation does not contain uh, many basic spiritual principles in, in uh, symbolic form, we must also admit that the book deals with uh, real events that will come to pass. Some have already come to pass, and, and all of it is going to come to pass. Then it's a futuristic. Uh, this school of uh, emphasis and it emphasizes that Revelation is prophecy, that from chapter 4 on we have a prophecy of events that will uh, transpire on earth and in heaven after the church is raptured. Now, the bride of Christ uh, is going to leave here. Amen. The dead in Christ will rise first, and, and we that remain shall be changed in the moment of twinkle of eye, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Amen. Uh, but uh, we understand what they're saying. Genesis to Revelation, the first and the last books of the Bible, uh, complement each other. Genesis talks about the creation of the heaven and earth. In Revelation, creation of new heaven and new earth. In Genesis, the uh, first Adam reigning on earth. In Revelation, the last Adam reigning in glory. Amen. And, and uh, Genesis, night uh, and seas uh, created. Uh, then in Revelation, no more night, no more sea. Amen. Uh, the bride brought to Adam uh, when God took a rib, man made woman. And then uh, we're going to, the bride prepared for Christ in Revelation 19. Amen. In Genesis, uh, a tree of, uh, of life in Eden, they lost uh, that property from, because of sin. Uh, the, a tree of life in the new creation, and by the way, there's going to be, uh, there's going to be a, a, a river flowing from the throne of God with trees on both sides of the river. Amen. And uh, I, what a day that's going to be. Amen. Uh, Genesis, we have the conflict between Christ and Satan, 315 of Genesis. Satan's final doom in chapter 20, verse 10. Man driven from God's face uh, because of sin. Man sees his face in glory again. Amen. 22.4. Believers looking for a city by faith. The holy city presented in glory coming down from God. Amen. Uh, Genesis says in 22 7, where is the lamb? In 22 3 of Revelation, the lamb reigns. Amen. In, uh, in uh, Genesis 3 1, Satan utters the first lie. Uh, in, uh, in Revelation 21 27, Nothing that makes a lie enters the city. Amen. A whole lot of politicians are going to have to get saved. Amen. A whole lot of preachers too, by the way. Amen. And uh, amen. I'm, I'm in trouble. Amen. Revelation then uh, outlines God's program uh, for human history. What began ages ago in the first creation will ultimately be completed in the new creation. Amen? This is the book with a blessing. If you'll read it, he said, I'll bless you. If somebody else will read it to you, I'll bless you and them both. And, uh, and, and I like to listen uh, to Alexander Scorby read the book of Revelation. And, uh, and this is uh, uh, the book with blessings, and we see those blessings. Uh, it shows us that history is his story. The human affairs are in the hands of our uh, victorious Christ. 
He's never lost a battle. Not going to start now. Amen. And he said, Father, everyone you gave me, I still got them. Amen. And as we study this book, we ought to be encouraged. We ought to be inspired to, to serve. There's a lot of difference between salvation and service. And I, I fault a lot of churches for not training their people to serve. Amen. You serve because you love him. The only other reason to serve. A lot of people, they, they, they want uh, recognition or, or some kind of, uh, uh, some, but we, I want to do it because he first loved me. Amen. Uh, it shows uh, us that history is his story. The human affairs are in the hands of our victorious Lord and Savior. As we study this book, we ought to be encouraged. We ought to be inspired. To live clean lives that we might be ready when he comes, amen, or calls. Now, um, I believe there's a lot of people saved that are not serving. If they were serving, they would strive toward a clean life. I'm not perfect, but I am saved, amen. But I'm striving towards perfection as I grow in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Now, there's a suggested outline uh, of Revelation. Uh, first, the things which thou hast seen. He's telling uh, uh, John as he gives the word of God. John's vision of the glorified Christ as king priest. He came as a sacrifice the first time. He's coming back the next time to gather the bride out to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And then when we come back, we come back with him to rule and reign a thousand years on this earth, victorious over death, hell, and the grave. The, uh, the things which are, chapter 2 and 3, the seven churches, ex excuse me, mm, hiccups, Expose the spiritual condition of human churches today. Now, they also desire and describe the prophetic history of the church from apostolic times to the rapture. Things are going to get better. Amen. Then they will. They may get worse before they get better, but... Uh, then not only the, the uh, number one, the, uh, the things which thou hast seen, and the second point in the outline is uh, the things which are, and then the third point in the outline is the things which shall be hereafter. From chapter 4 to 22 deals with the things hereafter. The rapture of the church, uh, chapter 4, verse 5, John's called up. The Lamb takes his throne in heaven. The tribulation of, uh, of seven years, uh, verses 6 through 19. The first half of the tribulation, the rise of Antichrist, his covenant with the Jews, terrible judgments on the nations, 144,000 Jewish preachers are sealed and God raises up two witnesses to preach. Israel uh, back in her land again. And all that land, none of it belongs to the, uh, to the Arab. All that's been given to God. Uh, and by the way, the Jews are going to inherit the entire earth. Amen. That's the first half, half of the tribulation. The middle of the tribulation, chapters 10 through 14, uh, and uh, he said, delay no longer. Antichrist breaks his covenant, seats himself on the throne and proclaims to be Christ when it's actually the devil. Temple taken by the Gentiles. The two witnesses uh, are slain and raised. Cast, uh, Satan cast from heaven. And the beast revealed in his terror and uh, the truth of who he really is. Now, the two witnesses uh, that we talk about here, uh, 
They, uh, anybody have an idea who those two witnesses are? And you, if you don't, you will. The only two men that Scripture recorded that, that didn't, no, they're not angels. There's, these are actually men that have lived. Two men that we know of in the Word of God that never tasted death. Enoch walked with God 365 years and went, went with God. Elijah was taken in a whirlwind. A lot of people try to put Moses in there, but Moses, yeah, Moses died. Moses died, and the Lord buried him. That's right. Amen. Even the devil don't know where the grave, his grave is. But uh, I believe they, and they're going to taste of death, but and they're going to pitch a party. I mean, when these two witnesses are killed, they're going to pitch a party. And uh, I mean, they're going to televise it nationwide and think they've, they've done something wonderful. And then after three and a half days, they get up. And they go up. Amen. And now it's about to work. I go to work. The last type of the tribulation, chapters 15 through 19, uh, the seven last plagues, the fall of Babylon, the battle of Armageddon, and Christ returns to earth. Then we start the millennial reign of Christ in chapter 20. We have the new heaven and the new earth, chapters 21 and 22. A suggested outline of a, a future events, the rapture of the church will take place without warning. The Bible said two will be in the bed. One will be taken, one will be left. Two will be laboring in the field. One will be taken, one will be left. Uh, I mean, uh, that's how quick it's going to come. Only the church is out of the way. The mystery of iniquity will increase rapidly, according to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Antichrist, that means against Christ, is already on the scene working as a peaceful conqueror. He helps to establish a new United States of Europe, the revived Roman Empire of Daniel's image of Daniel II. He's not yet a world leader, nor has his uh, satanic character been seen. Israel is safe in its land, but is being threatened by Egypt, the king of the south. And Russia is the king of the north. Now these are mentioned. Antichrist makes a covenant with Israel for seven years to protect her land, Daniel 9, 26, 27. The making of this covenant is a signal for Daniel's 70th week to begin. That seven-year period we call the time of Jacob's trouble or the tribulation. We do not know how much time uh, there's, uh, there is between the rapture of the church and the making of this covenant, but it need not be a long period. Antichrist could well be a strong leader in Europe right now. Amen. And, and it can be up to that place uh, of the, uh, right before the, the rapture of the church. Now, let me, uh, let me move along here. And... Uh, God now begins to send judgment down upon the world, the seals and the trumpets of Revelation 6 through 9. He's punishing the Gentiles and scourging the Jews. At this time, God sends his two witnesses, and, uh, and you draw your own conclusions there. I, 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 you know, the only two men didn't taste of death was Elijah and Enoch, amen. Now, and uh, just... Uh, you say, well, maybe it was, well, maybe it was Moses and Elijah. Well, well, I know Moses was on the Mount of Transfiguration, and uh, I know that. But uh, these two men will be uh, divinely protected for three and a half years. First half of the tribulation, at the middle of the tribulation, will be slain by the Antichrist. However, their ministry will bring 144,000 Jews to Christ, sealed and protected servants, whose ministry will lead multitudes of Gentiles and Jews to Christ. You have now the following uh, power groups. United States of Europe, headed uh, by the beast. Egypt on the south, 
Russia on the north, Israel caught between, and the kings of the east, according to Daniel 11, 44, and that includes China. I don't think we ought to be hobnobbing with China. Egypt and Russia invade Palestine, Daniel's 1140. This is the battle of Gog and Magog described in Ezekiel 38 and 39. In 3813, we see the other nation pro, uh, protest this action, suggesting that the United, uh, United Nations may still be at work, but unable to accomplish anything. The beast uh, keeps his promise and goes to Palestine to fight. However, God defeats Russia on the mountains of Israel, and all the beast can do is fight and, and defeat Egypt. We are now at the middle of a seven-year period. The beast realizes how rich Israel is and decides to take it over for himself. He breaks his covenant and sets himself up to be the God of Israel in the temple at Jerusalem. These events are seen in Revelation 10 through 14. Uh, the beast uh, slays the two witnesses whose dead bodies will be viewed by, uh, over TV uh, by the entire world uh, for over three days. Of course, the Jews always believed the spirit dwelt near the body for three and a half days. They will be viewing that and, and giving gifts and exchanging gifts and rejoicing over them being dead, and all of a sudden, up they come. Amen. And they go, uh, they go into heaven. They're raised and taken to heaven. The beast will now begin his worldwide dictatorship with Russia out of the way and will force the world to obey him and worship him. Israel will be persecuted and many believers slain for the truth. But a coalition of eastern kings now appears. Daniel eleven forty four, 44, Revelation 16, 12, and 9, 14 and challenges the rule of the beast. During the last half of uh, the tribulation, there's a movement of nations that we ought to uh, call the campaign of Armageddon because it involves so much. During the last half of the tribulation, uh, this eastern coalition will oppose the beast and march toward Palestine, uh, an army of 200 million. Uh, according to Revelation 9, 16, the beast and his armies will face the kings of the east and their armies on that great plain of Megiddo. Uh, you can read Joel chapter 3, Revelation 16. But then the reign of the Son of Man will appear according to Matthew 24, 30. And the nations will decide to fight him and not uh, uh, each other. Of course, Zechariah 14, good book. Uh, to, to enlighten you on this in Revelation 19. Christ will return to earth in power, defeat the beast and his allies, and judge them, according to Daniel 11.45. The beast and the false prophet will be cast into hell, and Satan will be bound for a thousand years, according to Revelation 21-3. through 3. Christ will, be, uh, will then gather the Gentile nations for judgment, Matthew 25.31, and test... Uh, them as uh, the way they treated his brethren, the Jews, during the tribulation. This will determine which people will enter the kingdom. Christ will establish his kingdom with Jerusalem as the center and will reign for a thousand years over the world. And we will reign and rule and reign with him. During this time, the kingdom promised of the Old Testament has been fulfilled. After the millennium, Satan will be loose for a season and will lead one final rebellion against Christ. We, uh, he will be defeated and cast into hell. All the unsaved dead shall be raised to be judged at the great white throne judgment, Revelation 20, 11 through 15. They will be cast into the, uh, the, the uh, imprisonment of, of the lake of fire. Amen. There will be a new heaven and a new earth. Amen. Amen. Any questions so far? Okay. I got a little bit of time left here. The seven churches of Asia Minor we're going to run into in Revelation chapter 1 and 19. Uh, it is an uh, inspired outline of the book, uh, if you really want to look at it. And Revelation 2 and 3 represents the things which are. In other words, uh, Christ... Uh, 
selected seven churches out of uh, many in Asia Minor in order to get across his specific message. The Lord always meant for us to understand his plan. The problem is a lot of, a lot of people don't uh, are not accepting that plan. But anyway, whether they accept it or not, it's still the plan. Certainly, there uh, there uh, there were a, all a lot of circumstances. In other words, Christ selected these seven churches uh, to illustrate uh, the uh, to the spiritual condition possible in the churches until he he comes. The prophetic history of the church uh, from the apostolic times until uh, the end of uh, history as we know it. Seven is not an arbitrary number. It speaks of the completeness of history as far as the churches are concerned. Now, uh, the seven churches, these were, the, these were named specifically. Ephesus, uh, apostolic times, starting at uh, the lost... Uh, the, the, they lost that first love. Uh, uh, Smyrna, the persecuted church of the first century, uh, anywhere from 100 to 300 A.D. Pergamos, the church joined the Rome, the state church, 312. The Roman Catholicism, fornication, and idol worship, Thyatira. Sardis uh, is the church of Reformation, name that is alive, but yet it's dead, amen. Philadelphia, the church of brotherly love, uh, the missionary church of these last days, of which we're part of. And then the, the church of Laodicea, the, the apost apostate church of the last days, they were lukewarm, they were crying, they, they, uh, Christ has, has, they've got Christ outside the church. Seven churches outline church history and the development of the two main branches of the profession church, Romanism and Protestantism. Ephesus, the apostolic church. Smyrna, Rome persecuted the church. Pergamos, Rome accepts the church. Thyatira, Rome controls the church. The result, Roman Catholicism. Sardis, uh, churches pull out of Rome. Philadelphia, modern mission movement. Ephesus, lukewarm super church. Result, dead Protestantism. Note that a special word is spoken to the overcomers in each church. You see, I believe that uh, there's some people saved in every church. Even those that, uh, uh, I know of a lady that, uh, that's a Lutheran, I believe with all my heart, is a Christian. And uh, and Martin Luther, if anybody got saved, I believe Mar he was he was at home sick with dysentery, and, and he was reading the Word of God, and got under conviction and got saved in his in his water closet at home, or somewhere in between the bedroom and wherever he was at. Now, note that the spiritual word is spoken to the overcomers in each church. The overcomers are not super saints. Uh, uh, in each church, a special group that will receive privileges from Christ, no, uh, he overcomes uh, are true believers. In each of these churches, uh, we dare not believe that every member of every local church in every period of history uh, is uh, a true child of God. Those uh, who are who, who do belong to Christ are overcomers. And I hope you're an overcomer. Amen. And of course, 1 John, uh, 1, uh, 1 John 5, 4 and 5. In every period of history, there have been true saints in the professing church, even within the church at Thyatira, which represents Roman Catholicism. Christ uh, speaks a special word of encouragement to them in each period, and certainly we may apply these words to ourselves today. Note, too, that Satan is mentioned in connection with four churches. He is behind the persecution in Smyrna. Amen. Behind the persecution in Smyrna. And he, is, uh, he has his throne, his seat at Pergamos. 
He teaches his deep doctrines at Thyatira. He uses his synagogue of false Christians to oppose the soul winning efforts of Philadelphia. Christ points out several dangers in these churches. First of all, in verse 6, chapter 2, he talks about the Nicolaitans. You may want to uh, uh, write this down. The word uh, means conquer the people, Nicolaitans, and suggests a separation of clergy and laity in the churches. This begins as, uh, as deeds in Ephesus, but becomes a doctrine in Pergamos. So it goes, uh, men introduce false activities into the church, and before long, these activities are accepted and, uh, and blessed. And not only that, but in chapter 2, verse 9, we have Satan's synagogue. This refers probably to the assemblies of people who claim to be believers and are really children of the devil, John 8, 44. The word synagogue simply means to bring together. It is an assembly of people. Satan then has a church, as well we know, don't we? Amen. Then we have the doctrine of Balaam out of Numbers 22 through 25. Balaam led Israel into sin by telling them they could mix with other heathen and not be judged for it because they were God's covenant people. Well, he lied to them, amen. He could not curse them, but he could tempt them with the flesh, and that's what's going on today, amen. This doctrine is the idea that the church can be part of the world and still uh, uh, do their job. And uh, by the way, we shouldn't come to the church and see the world and go to the world and see the church, amen. Now, uh, this doctrine, then, is the idea that the church can be married to the world. Not, note that, there, that it appears in the, in the period uh, when the Roman emperor stopped the persecutions and adopted the Christian faith as the official Roman religion. The church and the world were married. And the doctrine of Balaam, uh, caught by false prophets, made it possible. Then we have a reference to Jezebel. In chapter 2, verse 20 of Revelation, uh, this takes us back to 1 Kings and, and through 2 Kings 10. Jezebel was the heathen wife of King Ahab, a woman who led Israel into wicked Baal worship. She killed its people and uh, believers. She uh, seduced Israel with her false teachings. In uh, the New Testament, it is usually a woman who introduces false teaching. Amen. Jezebel appears in the period when Roman Catholicism is developing with its emphasis on Mary, Queen of Heaven, and on idols. Everything that amazed me when I was in Haiti and in Jamaica was how many idols were in these countries. And a lot of them were sitting in the Roman Catholic churches. Amen. When I was in Port-au-Prince, uh, Haiti, uh, of course, that's the seat of, of, uh, of the devil down there, especially in witchcraft and in Buddha, uh, not Buddhism, but uh, 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 the witch doctor. Uh, that's the seat of evil down there. And uh, we, we know a whole lot about that down there. And uh, it's, 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 it's alive today. Now, Jezebel appears in the period uh, when Roman, uh, Roman Catholicism is developing. Now, let me quickly give you this and I'll be done for tonight. The personal message. While it's important for us to see the prophetic picture of the church in these seven letters and to be wire, at least our local assemblies, Paul prayed to false doctrines. Amen. We must also uh, see the personal messages in each letter. After all, churches are composed of people, and what happens to the members uh, is bound in, to affect the church, uh, not the spiritual problems, uh, 
uh, we need to listen to Ephesus, busy for the world, but no, in, in, uh, but no sincere love for him. A uh, program without uh, passion. This is a busy church with a great, uh, we've got a lot of statistics. Uh, then uh, Smyrna, there's no criticism from the Lord, but a danger is still present. This was a poor church, a suffering church. How easy it would have been to uh, compromise, become rich, and, and escape persecution. Pergamos, this church, had members who held uh, false uh, doctrine and made it uh, easy to profess Christ, but to go ahead and live in sin. And then Thyatira, a woman uh, was out of place in teaching doctrine, and her doctrine led the people into sin, while the primary emphasis here is on Rome, any local church can fall uh, into error. Sardis, reputation without life. Her future w was behind her. This is a has-been church with a great name in the past, but no ministry of today. Uh, Philadelphia, the church of the open door, taking the gospel to the world. This is the church that holds the, uh, the word and honors Christ's name. But Satan sent and God's not far away, and there is always the danger of compromise. And lastly, Laodicea, the lukewarm apostate church with, with a big budget and no blessing. This is a church that's, that is materially rich and well off, but spiritually bankrupt. And the tragedy is the people do not know how poor and miserable they really are. Christ stands outside the church uh, knocking on the door and walking in. Now, uh, are we going to let him in? Next week, we will pick up chapter 1 and start dealing with some other things and go into chapter 2 and start our discussion on the churches. Please read chapter 1 and chapter 2 and chapter 3 at least three times, the Word of God, and then read Dr. Green's notes, and I know they'll help you. May we bow. Father, thank you for what our hearts have felt. Thank you for what we have saw through your word. And Lord, would you get the glory and the honor out of it all. For it's in Christ's name I pray. For God.